Good afternoon, everybody. It is time for Lunchbox Live. One of my favorite things to do on Thursday afternoon is eat lunch with other saints of God or sons of God, just to sit around and converse about um, the word of God. <clears throat> I think it's such a blessing um, to talk to each and every one of you all. And um, it's just the life of one of my uh, things that I do in the week. So I'm glad that you joined us on today. Now, remember today, we're still talking about Revelation in which out the two verses eight through 11. God still has me there. Um, we're talking about the church of Smyrna. <clears throat> so we're gonna wait um, a couple of minutes and let everyone have a chance to join us on today. Hello, good morning, Sister Booker, and good morning, um, Sister Parker. I'm trying to get everyone a chance to join in today, but I'm excited about today. Uh, you know, I want to move forward, but the Lord has allowed me to move forward in this. Hello, Sister Lynn. Good morning to you. But it's a it's a very important topic we're talking about today. I thought I would be done with this. Oh, uh, and the Holy Spirit keeps downloading some things in me to, to is having me to stay still on um, right where we are. So I guess when he does that, it's very vital um, to get the message across to people. Um, good afternoon, Sister Aisha. And I hope that everyone is ready just to have their input. I mean, just to, to you know, y'all just have fun today and hear what God is saying. Remember, um, iron, iron sharpens iron. <clears throat> I'm sorry about that, but I want everybody, Sister Lewis, good, good afternoon. I would like everybody to, you know, text your friend. I'll call them and tell them we're about to start up in about um, 20 seconds to tell them to come on and join us. To have a good time and remember this y'all i love the input that y'all give and so the more that you share the more i believe it's just exciting about how you feel and you know we all grow together iron shop is earned we all learn together amen because no one knows everything but with all of us coming together the holy spirit will download on what he's trying to say unto the church and so we're coming from um um the Church of Smyrna is still, amen. And the topic, I have a topic today in this is called In Intense Faith. In Intense Faith. So I'm going to pray so we can go ahead and get started. Father, we just thank you and we bless your name. We give you glory and we give you honor. Have your way. Give us ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. Lord, we're here to be about your business, that the gospel of Christ will be spread across the land to get us ready for the things that you have um, for us right now and in the future. Lord, we thank you for you unveiling your word. You said, God, if we we are blessed if you read and understand Revelation. So give us understanding. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And we all said, amen, amen, amen. So now in, um, in intense faith, I'm going to go ahead and read verse 11. I'm sorry, verse 8. We already talked about 8 and 9 and some of 10. So I'm going to finish up on, on 10. It reads in verse 8. And to the angel, divine messenger of the church, is Smyrna right. These are the words of the first and the last absolute deity, the Son of God, who died and came to life again. I know your suffering and your poverty, but you are rich and how you are blaspheming and slandered by those who say they are Jews and are not, but are a synagogue of Satan. They are Jews only by blood and do not believe and truly honor on the God whom they claim to worship. Verse 10, fear nothing that you are about to suffer. Be aware that the devil is about to throw some of you into prison, that you may be tested in your faith. Okay, that's what we talked about on um, verse 10 on last week. And it says, um, if you must die for your faith, and I will give you the crown of life. So I'm going to pick it up where it says in verse number 10, be faithful to the point of death, which uh, it is a very rough to, to understand that even though my faith is tested, and remember, it's, it's going to be 10 days, and some of us 
may die. It says, be faithful to the point of death if you must die for your faith. Now, the question is, now, when we talk about an intense faith, let me give a definition of intense. Intense means of extreme force, a degree of strength. So your faith has to be so strong and it be so forceful that no matter what you're going through, it'll get you past death. So then the question is, can your faith that you have now get you to the point of that you're ready for, to die for Christ? Now, don't be so quick to answer that. It's something that you think about because it's all about your faith. What type of faith do you have? How strong is your faith? Um, how weak is your faith? Does, do you have enough strength or intense, intense, uh, intense faith to when things get hard and they're about to kill you, would you sit there and say, I denounce Christ? Or would you say, for Christ I live and for Christ I die? When everyone is screaming, what would you say? Um, what would you do? Do you have that type of faith? Come on, uh, um, someone answer that question, a few of y'all. Do you have that type of faith to get you through death? Again, do you have that type of faith? I want to hear from you all. The faith that no matter what you're going through, that you will die for Christ. Someone says, for Christ I live and for Christ I die. Come on, chime in, and I'll tell you this. Be honest. Be honest with yourself, because everyone's faith not, may not be at that point. And so it's, it's our job as leaders of the church to help you strengthen your faith. But right now, how strong is your faith? How much can you take before you say no more and I'm done and I'm not going to make it. Someone said that I like the, the answer. I love to believe that I do. Like they said, I, I love to believe. <clears throat> Let me tell you something. I love to believe that I have that type of faith. But remember, when your faith is tried through just say simple things, your rent, electric bill, spouse, a relationship. If that really gets you off, then my goodness, when it comes time to being able to die for Christ, you don't have that type of faith. That's just being real. Hey, hey Minister Parker, how are you doing today? I, I want to be real with you all today because this is very important. So then I want to read you the scripture in James. James chapter 2, verse 17. So too, faith, if it does not have works to back it up, is by itself dead, inoperative, and ineffective. So if you have faith and you don't have any works of your faith, then it's dead. It doesn't work at all. I want everybody to understand that. Is your faith working? Then it says in verse 18, but someone may say, you claim to have faith and I have good works. Show me your alleged faith without the works, if you can, and I will show you my faith by my works, that is, by what I do. Now, listen to me. That's very good. We have a comment that says, growing up, my mom always told me to know what you're going to do before you get there. So I see myself having the faith during those times of dying for Christ. Amen. That's a good a good um, example. Um, in James, we just read verse 18. We have two different types. Some people say they have faith, they have no works, and someone has faith. And I'll show you by my works, because I, you need to understand that having faith is different than works. However, if you have faith and no works, then you really don't have faith. But if you have faith by what you do shows people or shows God that you have faith. Did y'all understand that? I, I really want y'all to get that. So you cannot say you have faith and you don't obey the gospel of Christ. Point blank. Now let's talk about this. How many of you say you have faith, but you do not obey the gospel? And I don't want to hear anyone talk about, well, um, these pastors or these preachers or these leaders are preaching a false doctrine. Okay. 
it, there are other men and women out there who's preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. So guess what? You have to work out your own salvation and the Holy Spirit will guide you to the person that you're supposed to be under. So you cannot use that excuse that they're not preaching on the gospel and you're still sitting there or you still stand there. It doesn't work because if you tell me or, or you tell yourself that you have faith and you struggle with obeying God, you can never say that you have faith. I, I, I want you to understand there's something about when you believe God, I mean, when you really believe him, when you understand the word and you get the revelation, it is hard not to obey him because when, when, the, when the word gets in you and it becomes alive in you, it moves you into another place with God that no one can really explain unless you go there. And if you don't, if you don't do anything, if you don't do anything to nurture the measure of faith that he's given you, Guess what? At the time when it comes to show that you that you have enough faith to get you to death, you're going to miss out. You're going to lose because the, your faith has to be strengthened. I want everybody to understand when you get a measure of faith, you have to grow that faith. And a lot of people are not growing the faith that God has given them. Does everybody understand that? So then I, I, here's a good question. Here, the question is then, so then how do you get faith? Now, now, we have a comment. I think I would because I think about what happened. I have faith in Christ, and I think life without him, I don't want to imagine. Now, amen, that is a good, a good quote. Because today, can you imagine yourself without Christ? But then also today, I understand that disobedience separate me from Christ because that's what sin does. So then I have to believe God and want God more than I want to disobey him or do things in the world. And guess what? It's a lot of people in the church that are struggling when it comes to the gospel because they begin to compromise the word of God. You cannot take the world into the church. Understand that you cannot live in the world and live according to the gospel. You can't live both. You're either going to love the one and hate the other. You have to choose. I want y'all to understand. You have to choose who you want to follow. And you can't change. Oh, Monday, I do this on Tuesday. No, that's not how it works. I want everybody to understand this. Y'all have this, this, when I say y'all, I mean, a lot of people, I don't want to make sure I want to make anyone upset. But y'all, you know, this gospel is pure and it's holy. And, and, and God said this one thing, be holy for I am holy. It's certain things that we can and we can't do. And if you continue to do things that's not of God, you sit there and have to question yourself. And not question yourself, also question your faith. Because by your faith and your works, they don't line up. And if your faith and your works don't line up or your faith and your obedience don't line up, something is wrong with that picture. You have to be honest with yourself and say, guess what? Then I don't believe God like I think I should believe him. Someone says, I have to want God more than what I personally want. And that is a true statement. And a lot of people want personal stuff and believe they have time to get God. Y'all, time is running out. You never know because tomorrow's not promised. You don't know when God's going to take you out or when he's going to call you home. And you have to know right now what you're going to do. So then how then do you get faith? Now, I like this because it's in Romans chapter 10. And it's starting in verse 14. Um, in the 15, it talks about this. It says, I'm not going to read it to you. I'm going to paraphrase it. The Bible says, how can someone be saved unless they hear? How can they hear without a preacher? How can a preacher preach unless he's been sent? I want everybody to understand. Y'all see that? So he says, the only way a person can hear and the only way a person, the only way a person can hear um, faith is by someone proclaiming the word of God. Y'all with me? The only way is he sent someone out there to proclaim the word of God. I'm going to pick it up at verse 16. Romans chapter 10, verse 16. But they have not all obeyed the gospel. He said, now the gospel was preached 
and not everyone obeyed the gospel. The gospel was preached and not everyone obeyed the gospel. Stop right there. How many of you really and truly obey the gospel of Jesus Christ? Answer that. Do you obey him sometimes? Do you obey him all the times? Do you obey him most of the times? Or do you struggle all the time? Wow. Which one are you? Uh, uh, let's talk about we're around the table. What are your comments? Do you struggle all the time? Do you have faith most of the times? Do you have faith all the time? Do you have faith none of the times? Do you struggle all the time? Someone out there, please answer that question. Someone says, some, honestly, sometimes the struggle. Someone says, and we as the body struggle up with faith. Is there a point in your life that you don't struggle with faith? Is there a point that you don't struggle with faith anymore? Um, that's a good question. Can I obey God so much that I don't struggle none of the time when it comes to my faith? Someone put out, I'm striving to obey in every area. So right now is sometimes. Someone says they're working on it. Someone says yes in areas where we don't struggle. I'll tell you this, the more we grow, someone says they don't, not too often. I'll say this. <laughs> uh, let me give you a person in the Bible who I feel that he has a great answer for us. When Jesus was in Gethsemane, he was about to go through the cross. The Bible says this. He took his disciples and he kept a group there. Then he called for um, Peter, John, and James to go a little bit further with him. And he asked them, could they pray? While they stayed there, Jesus went out and prayed. And he asked the Father if this cup can pass from me. But then he says, but not my will, let thy will be done. And then he went back to his three disciples and found them sleeping and asked them, couldn't they not um, pray with him for an hour? So then Jesus went back again. Watch this, you all. Jesus is struggling for what about to happen. Even though he is Christ, he still have, he's still man also. Does everybody understand that? So Jesus go back again and pray and says the same words. And the Bible says that his sweat was like blood. He says, if this cup can pass from me. But he also says, but I'll say this, not my will, but let your will be done. And then went back to his disciples and found them sleeping. He went back again to pray three times, almost identical prayers. The last time the Bible says the angels came and strengthened him. I'll let you know if Jesus struggled, we're all going to struggle. And I want everybody, Jesus struggled. But in his struggle, let me tell you something. In your struggle, you have to have this in your spirit. If I have to go through it, God, not my will, but let your will be done in me. You understand that? Not, not my will. I really want to get out of this. But my mind says that I should run. But the spirit that's in me that I yielded myself to is having me to say this. Yes, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I will do it. It has to be a yes, Lord, in your spirit. Amen. Even though it may be hard at times, it has to be a yes in your spirit. So in Romans 10, 16, it says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing. Now watch this. Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. And we always quote, everyone is always quoting that scripture. Someone says, we struggle, but it makes us stronger. Amen. The, the, the struggle doesn't make me stronger, 
that's a good um when I what do y'all think? If I struggle with God, I mean, if I struggle, am I stronger because of the struggle? Am if I struggle, you all think about this, does it make me stronger? I think the only thing that makes me stronger is not the struggle, it's the obedience. What makes you stronger? When I hear the word and obey God and I overcome by the testimonies, because I just seen what God did in my life, no matter what I did, I did, I obeyed God and he was true to his word and that's what makes me stronger. So when it comes up again, I have a testimony that he did it before that I know he'll do it again. I think passing the test makes you stronger than the struggle, but the struggle brings out who you are. The struggle will let you know how much faith you have in God and how much faith you don't have in God. Someone says, you have to be willing to learn from your yes. You're right about that. You're stronger because you get through the struggle. You're stronger because you get through the struggle. I can get that. I, I understand that you're stronger when you get through the struggle. Because that's like a skin on a wall. Look, uh, I seen, like David said, um, I killed the lion and I killed the bear. So who is this uncircumcised Philistine? I can take a life because through my struggles and, um, and me surviving and me obeying, it made me stronger in Christ. So some things that we go through right now, it is making us stronger. So when it comes to the, the end times, when uh, when you have to have enough faith to get you through um, death, you can always say that I can remember the, the I went through this and I went through this. So now it has prepared me. It has prepared me to understand God. I mean, to, to um, not to understand, but to believe in what he said and I'll do it. A very good statement depends on how you handle the struggle. And that's a bit... Uh, I'm going to say, Sister Grace, that's a very good one because everyone handles the struggle totally different. Uh, because if, if some of us may, how can I say, am, am I struggle? am I fighting? And I'm only fighting to stay, uh, uh, to, to, to survive. But fighting to survive is different than fighting as an overcomer. Oh, uh, I want you to understand, fighting to survive. God doesn't want us fighting to survive. He wants you to fight because you're an overcomer. And the Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. So I'm fighting, believing what God said to me. So no matter what comes my way, the word of God will shoot everything around, um, shoot everything down. Someone says, it also says somewhere in the word that your spirit is willing, but your flesh is weak. Everyone have good intentions, but when it comes to the moment, where is your flesh? over your spirit. That's good. Everybody's spirit is willing. The Bible says the flesh is weak. Now, now this is what we're talking about now. Since so someone brought this up, he's moving us to another area. The area is how much how is your flesh then stronger than your spirit? Because you're only going to do or yield to what is stronger. And I'll tell you this, if you don't have the word in you, remember because faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God, if you're not hearing the word of God, I want y'all to understand it. If you're not hearing the word of God, then you have no faith. I love Brother Torrey says it makes us stronger for the next one coming. You're right. Every time I win, I'm stronger for the next one. But I want you to understand, I, 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 I should not be so depleted that my faith is shaken. I want everybody to say, don't, so don't come out of the struggle saying, I just got by. No, come out of the struggle saying, I thank God that he already planned this in my life and I knew I can survive. Amen. I know it because I have victory in Christ Jesus. I am an overcomer. This is right. I am the head and not the tail. You have to believe that during the struggle, it makes you understand who you are and who you belong to. Does everybody get it? So uh, when it comes to the faith, if you don't have the word of God in you, you can't say your faith is strong. If you don't crack open that Bible, if you only hear the word on Sundays and on Wednesday, believe me, your faith is not that strong. Because faith only cometh 
by hearing the word of God. I want everybody to understand it. Everybody always say, I have this, this great amount of faith. I say, if you have this great amount of faith, how much word do you read? How much word is in you? Tell me, I, I don't want you to sing it. I, I don't, I'm not talking about your praise. I'm not talking about your worship because praise and worship does not mean that you are strong, um, uh, are strong in the word of God because the only thing that's going to get you through is the word of God. I want everybody to understand. You can have good vocals. I get it. And guess what? And you can memorize scripture. I get it. However, if that word is not alive in you, if you don't apply that word in your life, it does not mean anything. The devil can tell you some scriptures. He can mess them up for you too. I'm telling you, just knowing the Bible does not mean you have faith. But applying that word to you, making that word come to a part of you, that means your faith will increase. Because I'm hearing what he's saying, and I'm, I'm actually doing what I hear. So when I say that that I have strong faith, that means everything that he's telling me to do, I have to do it. No matter if my flesh wants to do something else, the struggle is going to be there, y'all. The flesh is going to always come against the spirit. It's always going to be there. However, I don't have to yield to the flesh. I only hear the flesh speaking when I'm not in tune with the word of God. Let me say it again. When I'm in tune with the word, when I have a prayer life and I'm praying and I'm strong and, and I continue to talk to God throughout the day, I don't hear my flesh. The, the only time I hear my flesh is when I step back and I'm doing the things I'm supposed to do. I want everybody to understand that. And I know you you may say that, wait a minute, wait a minute now. How much faith did Christ have? Christ had a whole lot of faith. Why? The only time the flesh ever came against Christ is when he was about to die. However, he ended with telling the flesh, not my will, but thy will be done. Someone says, if the Holy Spirit in your heart, it will help you go through it. Okay. The Holy Spirit is always going to speak to every individual who has him. However, if you have so much of world and so much flesh in you, you will, you will not hear the Holy Spirit speaking to you or when he gives you a way of escape, you won't take it because you didn't hear him. That's why in Revelation, it always says, him that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying. Let me tell you something, not hearing as far as what the world is speaking, all of us, a lot of us have an ear in tune with the world, the fashions, what's going on, what the Kardashians doing, what's going on in the White House, um, what's the latest fads, you know, what's the latest gospels. We have an ear to hear all those things. We can speak about the, the next song, the next shoes, all those come out. How many of us are hearing that the prophecy of the word, or even today what God is saying for you, what is God saying for the church, what is God saying for your family right now? Because he's always speaking. He says, I tell my friends the secret things. So I, he wants us to have an ear to hear everything that he's saying. And as you begin to read the word, the Holy Ghost will reveal to you what he's actually saying. Not your education or your intelligence or man's wisdom, but the wisdom of the Holy Spirit will reveal to you what the revelation is of the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's why a lot of people get it wrong because they interpretation. They interpret it. However, you shouldn't interpret it. The Holy Spirit should interpret to tell you what thus says the word of God. So if you if your faith is built on man's interpretation or man's wisdom, you will always get it wrong. Let me say it again. If the man is teaching what he wants to teach and not what the Holy Ghost is speaking, man will always get it wrong. That is not a strong foundation. Your foundation is not built on Jesus Christ. Your, your, your foundation is built on totally man, mixed with the world, mixed with his interpretation, mixed on, guess what? I like what he's saying because he's not talking bad about me. But when it comes to the real word of God, the real word of God is going to correct you. It's going to reprove you. It's, go, it's going to get you right with him because he loves you that much. The word of God, won't, I want you to stay in your present tense that you're in now, but the word of God wants you to move into his presence and abide upon the shadow of the Almighty God. 
the word of God, amen. When, when the word of God proves you, when the word of God, when the spirit of God leads it to truth, that's what you want. You don't go to church to make you feel good. You go to church to hear what thus says the word of God. For people got to come in and praise and worship him and hear what he has to say. Let me tell you something. And sometimes when he talks to us, he's correcting us, reproving us, or reconnecting us, telling us what we need to do in the times that we live in or where we're about to go. If you get upset and mad because the word of God, because do you think the man or woman of God is always talking bad about you? Then you're in the wrong place because the word of God is not going to stroke you. If you're in a place that you're always getting stroked and everything is good because you like what he said, and that word is for so-and-so, what was for Sally and Susan and Joe and Jeff, this one, you'll never get it because the word of God is about you. When you go to church, he's always going to be speaking to you. Amen. Amen. God is good. And we went all that time. I'm sorry. Um, but I'll read this last thing to say to you all. And everyone knows this, 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. That's not a suggestion. That's what the word of God is. Amen. And if you want to get um, if you want to get stronger in the word of God, I'm sorry, strong in your faith. Hear what the word of God is saying to you. You understand that? Because faith comes by hearing. You have to hear what God is saying for you. You have to hear what God is saying in your relationship. I, I, someone said, yeah, that because God is not the author of confusion. May God loves us that much. And they, I want to let you know this. I'm, I'm sorry. I got to say this. He says, my sheep knows my voice and a strange voice he would not hear. Who are you listening to? If the voice is strange and it's not God, you need to dismiss it. Cast out every thought or imagination that exalt itself above the knowledge of God. But man, if you belong to Christ Jesus, you have to know his voice. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. And I thank everybody for joining on um, today. Man, God is so good. And, and now um, I understand about the Church of Smyrna because they're about to go through. And I thank God that right now we get an opportunity to learn about what, what's going to happen in Revelation at the end time. You also be faithful to death. If you must die for your faith, it says, I will give you the crown of life. Once you do this, once in, in, in Revelation chapter 2, verse number 10, once you go past the situation of your faith being tested or the situation where you have to die for your faith or when your faith is tested, he says, I will. If you die, I will give you the crown of life. I mean, this short period of time is nothing compared to eternity with Christ Jesus. I give you the crown of life. So you didn't die for nothing. I want you to understand it. No one's going to die for nothing. Not if you, his sons of God, or children of God, you're not going to die for nothing. He's got a crown of light to give you. Amen. So I'll finish up on 11 uh, next week and then go right into the next church. Amen. God is so good. And, and I'll let if you enjoy it. Um, have someone to come on and join in on next time. Um, and tell your friends they can always go back and listen to it. On, on Facebook. I, I thank you for your comments. It's like today y'all come in more than y'all ever have in a long time. And I, I'm glad that y'all did because faith is very important. I'll let you go. Read your word. Pray and seek God. Amen. Father, we just thank you. And I pray for everyone that's listening right now, God, and going to listen in the future. I pray for their ears right now that they could hear your voice. And I pray, Lord, that they're in another place, that they will obey everything that you have told them to do. And Lord, sometimes we'll miss it. Amen. We're going to continue to move forward. We have not, we don't have it yet, God. We haven't apprehended it yet. We haven't obtained everything, God. But I pray that we press toward the mark of the higher call, no matter what's going on, that we continue to press. 
because we are conquerors today. We are more than conquerors, God. But we're your holy priests and kings, Father God. We thank you for your word. We thank you for victory right now, God. We thank you that you will never leave us nor forsake us. So, Lord, just continue to have your way in us. Continue to mold us in the way you want us to be molded. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. And we all said, amen, amen, amen. Remember, Christ loves you. Christ loves you. And I will see you on next week. Y'all have a blessed day.